Hey, mathematicians, let's do your homework. All right, I'm going to model mm, one of the harder ones with decimals. So all four of these problems and most of them down this page, you're going to need a ratio table. So your ratio table should include the units that you're starting with, liters, and the units you're going to, milliliters. Then you're going to reference your star chart, which you can easily Google online. And I'll pull up a picture of right here so you can actually just snap a picture of it. If you just Google sixth grade math star chart, that'll come up. Here it is. I Googled it real quick. You can pull it up and make it even bigger. We're looking for liters to milliliters. So one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So you write that in. One liter is 1,000 milliliters. And then you can actually use the numbers in the problem. 49 and a half liters. Liters go with liters. Well, I can see here there's a relationship where I say one times a thousand equals a thousand. So liters times a thousand will equal milliliters. Remember when we multiply times a thousand, we're really moving our decimal point one, two, three spaces. So my answer is four, nine, five, zero, zero, also known as 49,500 milliliters. Well, hello, Mouse. Are you coming to say hi? Well, come say hi for real. Here's Mouse. Say hi, Mouse. Oh, he's upside down. Mouse is not so excited to say hi. All right, let's do another one. Mm, let's see. Let's go meters to centimeters. Meters to centimeters. Looking at your star chart, one meter is 100 centimeters. So if you have 269 meters, then you're going to multiply that number times 100 to get your centimeters. So same deal here, kilometers to meters. You're setting up your ratio tables. It doesn't matter. Ooh, that's not an M. It doesn't matter if you put kilometers on top and meters on the bottom or meters on top and kilometers on the bottom, so long as you're writing the appropriate number from your star chart. Let's do one that's a little bit more than just a conversion. Here we go. A cub weighs 12,560 milligrams. A calf weighs 1,254 milligrams. How many more grams does the cub weigh than the calf? Many more means you are subtracting. If you place seven 15 centimeter pens end to end, will the total length of the pens be greater than, less than, or equal to one meter? So seven pens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each of them is 15 centimeters. You can figure out how long that is. Take that number and compare it to the number of centimeters in one meter. Then tell me if it's bigger, smaller, or equal to. Flip the page. Fluid ounces we have not done yet, but it's on your star chart. So let's try it. A punch recipe calls for 4.5 pints of cranberry juice. Ms. Silvis has already added three pints. How many more fluid ounces? First of all, before we even look at fluid ounces, if we're supposed to have 4.5 pints and we've already added three pints, that means there's 1.5 pints left. So we're going to do pints to fluid ounces. We have 1.5 pints. Go look at your star chart. Where did mine go? Go look at your star chart. And here you can see fluid ounces, ooh, fluid ounces goes to cups, and then cups goes to pints. So you're going to have to do two conversions here. So fluid ounces to cups, we'll start there. Fluid ounces to cups. There are eight fluid ounces in one cup. Mm, we're starting with pints, so we actually don't need that yet. If we go cups to pints or pints to cups, go back. You can see one pint is two cups. One pint is two cups. So if we have one and a half pints, well, times two, that is three cups. And three cups times eight is 24 fluid ounces. So your answer is 24 fluid. FL stands for fluid. OZ stands for ounces. Ta-da. 
And this one is ounces and pounds. Back to our star chart. Oops, back to our star chart. Scrolling, scrolling. One pound is 16 ounces. So make our ratio table. Oops. Pounds, LBS for pounds. OZ for ounces. One pound is 16 ounces. So if we have 136 ounces, you can see here that going from 16 to 1 is going to be a divide by 16. So 136 divided by 16 will be our answer. You can figure that one out. Mm, let's see. Mel asked 50 students in her school which fruit they prefer. The table below shows the results. What decimal represents the fraction of students who prefer bananas? So to write a fraction, you need the part to like bananas out of the whole number of kids who were asked part to like bananas after add them all up. Also, I already told you what that number is, but you cannot make decimals out of 50ths. So you're then going to have to convert your fraction to a fraction out of 100 and then make it a decimal. Oh, I was trying to scroll on my computer. Here we go. Two more. You're looking for the points that all land in the shaded location. So if two of them are in the shaded location and one of them is not, that can't be your answer choice. All three of them need to be in the grayer area. So just for a reminder, if we're looking at this one, the first number is X, the second number is Y. So this would be 1 and 5. This point is inside the gray area. All three of them have to be inside the gray area in order for it to be your answer. And uh, not like on the line, exact like in the gray area. Okay, Mr. Goodwin tosses 25 coins. Three out of every five are heads up. So if we have five coins, three of them are heads up. I'm going to put an H because I'm not very good at drawing heads. And then the other two, well, your options are heads or tails. So the other two are tails. How many coins are tails up if he tosses 25 coins? Well, two tails out of five coin tosses. Set that equal to a total of 25 coin tosses. What's that number? So you're looking for a side-to-side -side relationship. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day.